Good morning and welcome to Berlin Walking. For today we will be designing a control system for the unicycle robot. We wish to follow a trajectory in space. The trajectory is very simple. It is a function of time. We have a time flowing somewhere and we would like to create trajectory based on it. If those are axis x and y, we wish to be able to write a function of time in here. Now, we will try the most basic one, for example, a sinus function on x and cosinus function on y. This means that at this precise moment in time, our robots should be in x0, y0. This is sinus of 0 is of course 0, cosinus is 1. That means I start over here. Then. I will be moving somewhere because the time is constantly flowing, so my functions will constantly change. Where am I moving? Well, let's calculate the velocity. The velocity will tell me everything I need to know about the change of my position. So, the velocity is of course the time derivative of sinus, so the cosinus. The velocity on the y-axis in the vertical way is, of course, minus sinus. Okay, but at this precise moment, what is my velocity? Again, let's calculate it at the time 0. At the time 0, this is 1, and this is, well, 0. That means I get a vector of 1, 0. A vector 1, 0 is something like this. Now, I attach it to my position. This is just a velocity, so it is a vector, but I attach it over here. So, I've got an initial velocity in this direction. But I will also get an acceleration. So, what is my acceleration? Again, I continue with my derivatives. The acceleration on x is minus sinus. The acceleration on y is minus cosinus. That means in the beginning they will be 0, this will be minus 0, and this will be minus 1. So my acceleration is aiming downwards. That means I will start my movement going to the right, but I will be bent by acceleration in a downward fashion. That means, quite probably, I will get something like this. Indeed, this trajectory is just a circle. This is a solution to the general equation of a circle like that, for example. So, I've got a radius 1 and sinus and cosinus are just the solutions that I need. OK, so this will be my trajectory and I can already see where my robot should start, what will be the initial velocity, and the acceleration. Now, this is the description of the trajectory. Of course, I can go on and calculate higher derivatives, but I will probably not need them. Usually, in the mechanical systems, acceleration and sometimes jerk is all you need to describe the higher derivatives. So now, what about the robot? If the robot starts over here, what should it do to follow this line? Well, that depends on the model of the robot and the control signals available to us. If my robot is a very generic one, a unicycle, I usually denote its model as I have a robot with two wheels. So this is the chassis, those are two wheels, and I control it using two control signals, driving forward and rotating the body. So I can drive forward with V and I can rotate the whole robot in this direction with omega. Okay, if I've got something like this, what is the kinematic model of the robot? The kinematic model was described in a previous video, but just in short, if you've got V over here and you wish to describe how this V influences the robot with regards to the coordinate system, how it changes its position, I will abuse the notation a little bit and use x, y also for this point, 
I need to calculate this vector on this axis, the projection. So I've got a little triangle, let's call this angle theta, that's the configuration of the robot, and I've got V, this will be the derivative on Y and X. Now please note, this has nothing to do with the trajectory. The trajectory description was just for the trajectory and now I forget about it. Now this is the robot. I reuse the, some variables, so x and y, just for simplicity. Right now you forget about it. And I've got x, y here. Good. They are v times. This is a triangle, so cosine theta will suffice. Sinus. Okay, that's it. I've got it split into two axes. Now, if I've got also omega, omega directly influences the change of my angular position in time. So by definition, it is just a velocity. So I can summarize my robot as on x I change with v cosine theta, on y I change with v sine theta, and on theta I change by using omega. That is my robot model. Okay, this is my robot model. What trajectory do I want? Basically, I would like my robot to follow this trajectory. So, a trajectory like this. Now, in order to make a little bit of difference in the notation, I will add here reference. My reference trajectory is just, well, sinus of time and cosinus of time. Now, I can try just using it together with the robot model, but they do not fit together. I've got first derivatives over here and here just positions. I can try to force my robot to follow first derivatives. The reference was cosinus and minus sinus. But if you try to enforce it right now with this robot model, you can join it together and try to calculate how should the, sig the control signals look like if the robot is forced to follow this. Don't worry, we will introduce a more mathematical description of this method in a moment. This is just how you should feel this method, how it works. Now, the problem is, I have substituted the reference trajectory I need, I want to have, into the robot model, and I want to calculate those two control signals. But take a look, you only have one of them. So it is not enough. You can't use position, you can't use velocity. Question is, can you use acceleration? Okay, let's try. My robot currently does not have any reference to, to acceleration, but I can make it use acceleration. If you imagine a car, when you are sitting inside a car and you are holding, for example, a steering wheel, you control the position of the steering wheel. But in reality, you control the angle of the wheels and actually the angular velocity of the car. When you control the acceleration pedal, you control the position of the pedal, but this position directly corresponds with the acceleration of the motor in the car. And the acceleration of the car corresponds with velocity that you measure on the dials of the car, on the dashboard. So everything is connecting using the derivatives and integration. And you can actually trick this robot into thinking it is acceleration controlled. That means I will grab this model and I will add one more thing. I will add a second derivative. What is it? Of course, it's a, another derivative of x. Okay, let's take x with a dot and let's make it one more derivative. Okay, v times cosinus, those are two functions of time. Control signals are also functions of time. So when you uh, differentiate them, you need to take them into account. 
So this will be V cosinus theta plus V. What's the derivative of cosinus? Minus sinus. Oh, it's not time. It's a function of time, more complex. I will need an inner derivative. And now, what do I get? I get, I will just uh, repay, okay, rewrite parts of it. Cosinus stays as cosinus. Uh, now, I will rearrange the order v times. This is omega. This is angular velocity. This is sinus. But this, I have left it for the last, as the last one. This is the change of velocity forward. This is acceleration forward. Okay, I've got A. But I need to add this information somewhere. If this is my new control signal, so I'm controlling the acceleration forward and angular velocity of the car, of the unicycle, that means the linear velocity should now be a part of the state. This is something the acceleration will change. So I add it here to the list. I extend my model with one more line. The velocity changes in accordance to the acceleration. And now my new inputs are A and omega. I have changed the set of my inputs. That means I am actually integrating it. Well, why? Because this can always be roughly translated into, when you integrate it, you will get V is the integral of A. Of course, you need time, you need everything here, but that's the general idea. So, okay, my model was the unicycle and it had v and omega as inputs, but now it will have a acceleration. So I introduce a and in the beginning I pre-integrate it in order to get a little bit better control over my model, a different type of control. That's an interesting idea. We will extend it in another video that called pre-integration in the control systems. But this is roughly everything like this. Now, if I've got A and omega, I can do the same with Y. I can integrate, uh, sorry, I can de calculate a de another derivative of Y with one dot, and I will get, of course, V times sinus plus V cosinus, and of course the inner derivative. A sinus and this is V omega cosinus. Okay, and now I've got X and Y. This is a point in space, X, Y. This is its acceleration in space. I can join it together into a matrix and then try to calculate the input signals from a matrix. Because in the end, I would like them to be something like this. I can do it by using matrix notation, of course. It will be a little bit simpler. Let's try it. X and Y, right now of the robot, not of a reference trajectory, together are. And let's clean it up. So that so it looks like this. Okay, so I am putting it after the matrix multiplication. That means inside this matrix will, there will be a times cosinus, cosinus minus v omega sinus minus v sinus a sinus sinus v cosinus v cosinus. Oh, take a look. This actually looks pretty much like a standard rotation in robotics. This is rotation around the axis. So in the planar coordinates, this is a rotation like this. 
So this is just a rotation of a V as a vector. I do not need to split it into a full rotation matrix. I can leave it like that. Because there will be one interesting side effect. If this is rotation, you can rotate whatever you like as long as the thing that you rotate is not zero. Because when you rotate it, well, it doesn't really change. And what do I need to do next? If I want to calculate A and Omega, I need to move this matrix to the left. I need to invert it times X and Y. And if it is a rotation and I need to invert it, and I, this is a rotation with something that is being rotated, if I invert it and I rotate it as zero, I can't. I can't invert a rotation of zero of something. And, okay, in a non-robotic speak, this is a matrix. If I invert it, the determinant cannot be zero. This must be invertible. This means if I've got here cosinus minus v sinus, sinus v cosinus, the determinant is cosinus times v cosinus minus minus v sinus sinus v cosinus square plus v sinus square v. The determinant cannot be zero. That means this cannot be zero. So I can calculate the inputs. I can do everything I want here as long as the velocity is not zero. Okay, so the velocity cannot be zero. I cannot stop at any moment due to my movement. But, well, as it turns out, my trajectory will not stop. If I have just a circle, it will never stop. It will always keep going, as long as you do not start with a velocity zero. So that's, that will be my initial condition. And if you've got the trajectory sinus cosinus, of course, first derivatives cosinus minus sinus, and second derivatives, the most important ones, minus sinus minus cosinus, you can grab those and substitute them into the equation that we got. So, we got, I will leave it here as a vector, this is my reference x and reference y. And I substitute it into the previous equation. Okay, I will just leave it as a matrix here. Uh, maybe for simplicity, we'll call it A. That will be simpler. And this is just A and omega. Okay, this is my matrix that I invert. Actually, it decouples the system. It lets me control X and Y in this system using my control signals, which are not necessarily on X and Y. This is what means decoupling in here. In nonlinear control, the decoupling is just whatever the inputs are, you are now, after using the decoupling matrix, able to control the coordinates because we chose them as our outputs, in a way. Yes, everybody who knows the theory of input-output linearizations right now are screaming in agony, but we will get to that. So we've got sinus and cosinus. This will work, assuming you never stop. You start precisely here, so you start at x0, y0, uh, 0, 1. And you start with a velocity of 1, 0. Sorry. So at full velocity of 1. Those are the main assumptions. The simulation should be pretty easy. From the simulation you will get the inputs and they will guide you on a circle.
Okay, but what happens if you do not start on a circle? You start with a slight error. You want to follow this precise circle, but you start somewhere in here, in space. There are two ways to tackle this problem. First of all, you can just extend your current method. So, you've got A and Omega, so the inputs, as the decoupling matrix times. Here we have the general equations for our reference trajectory. But we can extend it. We can add here a standard PD controller that acts on the error between your current position and your desired position. You know this desired position. If this is an error, this is an error between your current position. Am I writing this in the right way? I think so. Current position minus the reference. Oh no, sorry. I changed the order. Reference minus the current, of course. Well, both can be used, but you will need an additional minus sign in the result. So, you add here some p-controller, for example, 1, and you add error, and then a d-controller, in order to break a little bit during the movement. We don't want to have oscillations, an infinite number of oscillations, so we need a little bit of friction, a little bit of slowing down when you approach the cold position. So, we will use, well, the derivative of the error. Of course, we have it. If you calculate the derivative of everything in here, you forgot it. We had it earlier on, somewhere on our whiteboard. This was the first derivative of the reference trajectory. This is just the robot model, including the velocity v, which is now a part of the state. It's no longer an input. You can use it here, to calculate the proper inputs. Now, this all comes from something, from some part of the nicer control theory. Actually, this comes from the idea of input-output feedback linearization. So, we would like, while having a nonlinear model, to create a function of outputs that we will derivate uh, we calculate a derivative of up to some level, so-called relative degree, uh, and in this relative degree all the inputs will suddenly appear, and we, if we have an output-something-input relation, we can invert it, like we did with a matrix that we called A later on, the decoupling matrix. Let's try it. So, we are trying to calculate some outputs. I will call them H. They will be using some vector Q. This is a state. These are all the variables that describe my system in the beginning. Q actually is composed of x, y and theta. This is the state vector. Now, H will be the function of them. Of course, I will also add time in some way. So, what is my H? I would like this, this to be the output that I will be minimizing during my movement. So, if I want to come to the circle from afar, this means I would like to minimize this to be zero. The circle will be moving in time. It will be escaping, it will be traveling always forward, but I want to merge to it then get closer, 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 and then follow it precisely to anticipate every movement. Anticipation of movements is generally regarded as using the acceleration of the curve to take the proper corners on it. So, I would like to calculate my outputs R. Uh, let me use xr, yr, as my reference trajectory, minus xy, position of the robot. This is an error. I would like it to be zero. 
I would like it to precisely become zero over the, over the course of the simulation and stick to it, stick to zero. Whatever becomes of my trajectory, as long as it is well defined, is a function of time, it must be zero. What is the first derivative? Maybe it would be better to write something like this. The first derivative is xr yr minus xy. Of course, I know them. If this is sinus cosinus, this is cosinus t minus sinus t minus this is v cosinus theta v sinus theta. Now, the first control signal appeared. Please remember, this is just after the robot model and trajectory. Right now, my control signals are by definition v onto omega. The speed forward, the velocity forward, and the angular velocity. It's not yet acceleration, but it will become very soon. Why? Because in here, you only have one input. We want all of them. We want to have outputs equal something times inputs. Okay, let's try to calculate up to the relative degree. So up to the moment when all the inputs appear properly. Okay, let's square it. Second derivative. And I will get from this, I will get minus sinus. From here I will get minus cosinus. From here I will get V cosinus. Mm, I have minus, but either way it will be inside, so it doesn't matter. I have V omega and sinus. Here I have V sinus plus V omega cosinus. We did it a little bit ago, a little bit of time ago. Now, this is acceleration. Let's substitute it. Now this is a time when we introduce this as the new input. So we do the pre-integration. If those are the two inputs now, both of them have appeared in my equation. I can now try to invert it. Okay, first of all, let's move this little bit of trash to the left side. So, my outputs are mm, the second derivative of outputs minus trajectory that I wanted equals minus cosinus v sinus. Yeah, you know, the decoupling matrix. We had it there a while ago. But now we got it by using output function and the integration of the output function up to the relative degree. This is not yet based on the D derivative, but we will do it in another video when it comes to robot manipulators actually. Now we can invert it. So first of all I will move the minus sign over there, so I will change the order on this side. Uh, I will get uh, minus sinus, minus cosinus, uh, minus mm, h by dt square. I will invert by this matrix. Oh well, Actually, I will as well write it as a and just type a minus one. See, it's pretty much the same, except. Now I've got a second derivative of outputs here. What does that mean? I can now dictate how the second derivative of outputs look like. Previously, when I described the general idea behind this control method, I told you that you are telling the system how the acceleration of x and acceleration of y should look like. So how the second derivatives of x and y should look like. But now I am telling you something a little bit different. How the second derivative of output function should look like. There is a slight difference in, in the meaning. 
if I am able to dictate the second derivative of output function, I am able to dictate how this evolves. Not y and uh, x, but h. And this is a combination of trajectory and current position. This is the error function. This means if here is a circle, your robot is here, and you've got a current error in here, E, you are able right now to force, to enforce actually, the shape of E with two dots. This is it. This is it actually. If you are able to shape the second derivative, the second derivative of error function, this means you can actually pretty much do anything you want with it. For example, we start with an error of 5. What do we want to do? If we start with an error of 5 and 0 is here, I would like it to fall to 0. I would like to minimize this distance. So I will do something like this. Here we go. We start slowly, we gain speed, and then we break before the target. Now, you may already know what this is, but just in case, I will invert it a little bit for you. Don't judge me, please, that I'm writing the axis upside down for you. But in here, you will see that Oh, this is a second order inertia, the most beautiful inertial system in the world. This is an inertia without an overshoot, without oscillations, without anything. This means this inertia can actually be written as minus 1 times e minus 2 times the first derivative of e. This is the shape of this inertia. You want oscillations, you want something like this, just add 2 in here or level it to 1, 1, for example. You can shape the, shape, it, the re, shape the response of this system by just changing the shape of the second derivative. So, if you substitute it here, you will get A omega is the decoupling matrix times the trajectory Minus. Here we go, the error. We shape it as minus e minus 2 e with a dot. Minus minus plus. This is a P controller, this is a D controller. So this is PD controller. But this has arrived after the feedback linearization after we calculated the outputs for the system, we derivated them down uh, into inputs. Okay, so we took the derivative up to the relative degree and we stopped as soon as the, all the inputs appeared in our equations. Then we inverted it. We calculated the inputs equals something times outputs. If we have it, we can shape the outputs. So, we shape them as just an inertial system. The error will go down to zero. That's pretty much, like, that's pretty much it, with one small note, and you always have to leave it somewhere. It's still true. We still invert this matrix, so we cannot stop. This control method will never stop, because if you stop, you will get a control signal of infinity. So, in order to test our equations on a simulation, we need some kind of a unicycle model. Now, today we will use a predefined simulation. Let's launch robotic operating system. So, first of all, I will source my distribution. Uh, it is in here, rows. I've got the melodic version. First, let's launch the setup. Okay, right now I should have access to the row score. Here we go, the main server is starting and we've got the row score on the default port. Ah, nothing fancy. Now, I'll need some kind of 
error unicycle model. Let's start again. In the separate window, those two windows are independent. So if you don't run the melodic setup in here, you won't have access to anything. Let's run the turtle simulation. Now, the turtle simulation uh, is a basic unicycle with a visualization that you can connect to, control and read positions from it. Of course, I'm, as you can see, using a lot of auto completion. I don't really remember all of that. Uh, this, what you can see, you will not have on the Ubuntu system. This is a relict of launching it in a compatibility mode in both 32-bit and 64-bit option. Okay, so we've got our turtle. Now, for debug purposes, I will require some type of a keyboard control in here. So I will launch a keyboard mode also. Again, let's source the melodic and Let's run from the same turtle set. So I'm running from the turtle simulation. I need key operation. Teleoperation. Okay, well, here we go. Yeah, number one. And yeah, our turtle is moving. Let's leave him be. Now, uh, I'll need it all on all the desktops. And in here, I will launch my MATLAB. Okay, I've got, uh, I don't know if it is the latest version, I don't suppose so, I think the 2019 is already out. I've got the 2018B MATLAB, and of course it has the robotic operating system toolbox built in into the robotics uh, toolbox. But of course it requires you to pay for it, or, as in my case, to have the academic license. So, uh, when it launches, if it launches at all, uh, we'll try to, first of all, connect to our server, to the robotic operating system, the raw score. Uh, then we will create a publisher and a subscriber. Publishers are for you to create messages that you send to somebody, you publish them. And of course, a subscriber is something that reads from a topic available somewhere in our robotic operating system. And I have a lot of time to discuss this because the MATLAB is not so fast to start. No, it's not yet ready. Don't be so hazy. Okay. Our turtle is constantly running. We won't be resetting it anytime soon. And I think here we go. Ready, ready, not ready. It's not really ready. No, it's not ready. Uh, unfortunately, the support for MATLAB on the Stackware Linux is not very great. So it's a little bit of a hack job to, to run it. Okay, Ross in it. Yeah, I've got the frame rate on MATLAB. It's not very good. Uh, okay, Ross in it, initializing the bound node. Now, if you don't have a uh, Ross core running somewhere, MATLAB will do it for you. So if you, for example, run a non-typical setup with the robotic operating system with some remote node and you don't specify in here to connect to this particular node, it will run its own local setup. Now, first of all, let's create a, a subscriber and a publisher. So first of all, I will create a pose. So this will be my raw subscriber. Or maybe first before that. Ross topic list. What do I have? What do I have available? I've got the position of the turtle and the controls for the turtle. Okay, pause is the Ross subscriber. Now, if you hit tabulate, it will give you, of course, the whole list. Uh, I will subscribe to the pause. Yeah, thank you very much. We've got it. Now, I will try to receive one message from it. Now, this is a message from the pose. One, please. Here we go. Yeah, I am in a position X, Y with an angle theta. I've already tilted my turtle, so yeah, th th there is a theta of non-zero value. Now, let's create the control system. Uh, this will be a ROS publisher. Okay. I will publish two command velocity. Now, if you later on destroy your turtle, so you destroy this window, uh, those two publisher and subscriber beings will still uh, exist. They will be there. So those two uh, topics will not disappear right away. Please take note of that. And we've got the control system that accepts messages of a type, geometry messages, a twist. Okay, what's, what is a twist? Ross message. Yep, yeah, please. 
take the type from the control from the message type yeah here we go yeah i've got a twist it's a linear value a vector of three and an angular value a vector of three values yeah okay that's quite easy i won't be using all of them my turtle is only moving forward so it will be using a linear value x and it is rotating around the axis z yeah, because it is a planar coordinate system. The axis Z is aiming towards you actually from the screen. So you will be using the angular Z value. I've got those two. I can receive messages. Okay, let's test our unicycle. Edit. Create. Yeah, create new. Okay, so first of all, let's receive a message. Where is it? From the pose, let's receive a message. It will be only a partial script, so don't worry about it. Now, X will be from the pose. Remember, if you've got it already in your workspace, you can use the auto completion in the editor. So you can try writing pose and asking it what is available. I've got ooh, quite a while. Oh, sorry, not pose. I need to remember this. Uh, this will be my state. And now, if you launch this, only this one line, F9 launches one, one line, you've got now a state and it is remembered. Now state x, y is state y, and theta is state theta. Okay, I've got x, y and theta. Uh, I will suppress the outputs, I don't need them on the screen later on. Now I will create the decoupling matrix. I've got x, y, theta, so I can create A. You remember it from the lecture. This is a cosinus of theta with v times sines of theta. Yeah, I don't have v. I'll fix it right away. Uh, sinus of theta and... Oh, sorry. Minus. Uh, v cosinus theta. It's a modified rotation matrix, so it's quite easy to remember, actually. Uh, now, I don't have v. I'll create a starting v of 1 and I will modify it. Uh, what's the... Not indent. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will modify it using a very basic integration. I'll need acceleration. Oh yeah, acceleration. I can get that from you. Uh, acceleration is u1, omega is u2, and u is the inverse of our decoupling matrix times what do we want to do with our robot? Of course, we want to follow a trajectory. I will right now use our first sketch only, so I will use the second derivative of our trajectory. Please remember, this vector is vertical. This is very important, you will get some errors if you don't. Well, not errors precisely, miscalculations, and you will get an ellipsis actually. Okay, I've got A, I've got omega, I've got V. This is DT, of course, sorry. And I am ready to send my messages. So I will create a message, of course. Uh, and my message, where is it? Message, message, message. Ross message. Okay, let's draft it. Before everything, I will create a draft. Now, I will modify a linear value on x to be v. I will modify the angular value on z to be omega. And I will send to the control system, I will send my message. Now, I want to do everything from here in a while loop. So, let's indent it using a tabulator. Okay, that's it. I've got pretty much everything. No, I don't. He will shout that I don't have a time definition. This is an infinite loop, not a for loop, so I'll need to read my time. Uh, let's create a, well, a clock. Clock number one will be, let's tick. Okay, I've got a tick. My current time is tock, tick tock. Okay, so I tock the clock and I get the current time starting with the initial tick. Now, what is the dt between each loop? How, how much time do I, do, does it take to create one loop? It is, of course, the, last, uh, the current time, so talk the clock, please, minus the last time you have remembered. It will be pretty much close to zero in here, but later on it will actually be a very distinct value. Of course, I need to update my clock after it. Okay, I've got time, I've got state x, y, theta, I've got v, I've got au. Yeah, it's pretty much ready. Let's start it and let's see. 
Okay, that's not what we were expecting. It's a circle, but he's turning a little bit too fast, I suppose. Don't worry, it's not our final... Uh, fi uh, our final... version? Yeah. Okay, I think I'll need manually to correct it a little bit. Come, little turtle, let's go to the center. Okay, let's see, is everything all right? Uh, this is quite all right, I'm got talks, I've got time, I've got state x, y, theta, uh, I updated here, I've got a and omega. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so what else can we correct? If this was not enough what you were doing, uh, you can of course add in here, a, uh, going back with a PD controller. I'm checking because I suspect that I've got a slight error somewhere, but I can't find it. Receive a pause, x, y, theta. No, oh, seems all right. Okay, let's add a controller, a PD controller in here. Okay, now this will be three dots. I don't need even a plus sign if I use three dots. And I will add a P times E and D times DE, a PD controller. Now, of course, I need two gains. I will start with the most basic one that will give me a second order inertia without an overshoot and without oscillations. And an error is your trajectory, a sinus, okay, sinus of time, and cosines of time, oh yeah, it was a first mistake, it shouldn't be a comma, it should be a semicolon, uh, minus, where are you now? Okay, I'm here. Now, what is the first derivative? Cosines, of course, and minus sinus. Now, minus, uh, the, the first derivative of x is actually v times cosines of theta. And, oh, that was a mistake, uh, v times sinus of theta for the first derivative of y. Okay, I think it is it. Oh, he's traveling to zero, zero. Zero, zero is actually in here. So I need to offset my point. I don't think I need to correct it right now because I've got a PD controller. I only need an offset. Let's offset it by six. And let's see, where is point six, six? Somewhere here, I suppose. Okay, he's trying to make a circle. Let's see how perfect it will be. Here is 0.66. Yeah, it's quite perfect. Okay, so it is actually working. Now, if you, of course, right now stop it and move it to a 0.64, it will stabilize itself around the 0.64, so two lower. Okay, and since the radius is one, they will be touching. Now, you can, of course, go and go even lower. Okay, now I won't have an 8, I will have something like this. And it's not really a crime. Now, you will notice that it's not a perfect circle, it slowly joins the proper shape of a circle. This is because of our gains. They are not too big, so the correcting controller PD to the trajectory is quite slow, but it doesn't have an overshoot, and this was the only thing that we were worrying about. 